Guys, it's you and welcome back to another LBA battle. I believe this is week five. Yeah, it's week five, round five rather. Week three, round five. Um, versus my friend D Train. And if you guys didn't know, D Train is the guy who records most, if not all, my LBA stuff. And he produces some pretty cool content over on his channel. Um, so I really do encourage you guys to go check him out. Very, very cool guy. And um, yeah, so he is the owner of the London Dragonites, and uh, I'm on, I'm actually on the far side this week because he just sent me his footage from the battle, and like you know, it's cool. Anyway, um, looking at his team that he brought this week, he brought physically defensive a Poudon. Um, he brought specially defensive Gorgeist. He brought, I believe that's C, yeah, that's CB Dragonite. He brought Life Orb Mamoswine. He brought. I believe Scarf Hat. No, it's not Scarf Hactress. I believe it's Lumberry Hactress. And then he brought a uh, Scarf uh, Landorus. And so looking at his team, uh, he's super ice weak. So HP Ice from Thundee and Ice Fang from Gyra can pretty much tear his entire team apart. And um, I also had HP Ice on Gengar, but I ended up trading Gengar away. Uh, just because while Gengar is great for breaking down a lot of teams, I just felt like I needed more speed on my team and something like halucha could do that for me because it's a threat that forces people to prepare for it and takes a lot of strain off of stuff like thunderous and stuff like excadrill and stuff like gyarados but anyway looking at my team um i brought specially defensive clefable i brought a sub sd halucha i brought a dd gyarados i brought choice scarf Ex excadrill for the fifth time <laughs> um i brought offensive thunderous with t-wave to help support uh, Gyarados, even though he does have a lot of ground types, and I did bring Weezing this week. So my ultimate game plan is to weaken his team with stuff like Excadrill and slow his stuff down, hopefully uh, leave a lot of his ground types left and his uh, Gorgeist, and then uh, sweep him with Gyarados. So um, I think that's a pretty feasible plan. Um, also, Halucha was just kind of thrown on here just because... You know, uh, the trade happened like 15 minutes before we battled, so, but you know, it's fine. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and start the battle here. Um, so, I, I missed you in a challenge this time. I'm going to go ahead and lead with Carl Weezer, which is my wheezing, as he ends up leading with his Hepowdon right here. I'm just going to go straight away for the Will-O-Wisp, because I know he can't actually touch me, and he's just going to set up his rocks. And uh, that's perfectly fine with me. And uh, on the second turn right here, I'm going to go ahead and Will-O-Wisp again, because I thought, you know, he may... He's either going to Whirlwind me or switch out, and I only have Sludge Bomb, so it, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense for me to do anything other than that. So he's going to Whirlwind me out into my Clefable, which um, is actually unaware this week to help me versus Dragonite. Even though he probably would bring Iron Head, I just figured, you know, if he doesn't, it's fine. Um, I can play around it. So right here, I believe I'm just going to... Yeah, he switches out right here into, into his Gorgeist, which is his specially defensive wall this week. And I'm just going to go straight away for my own Stealth Rocks, um, because, you know, uh, it just it breaks Dragonite's multi-scale. It helps wear down Lando a lot more for Excadrill, and, uh, you know, all is well. So right here, he's going to go for a Will-O-Wisp, and we're basically going to exchange status right here. Um, I thought about running Toxic on this Clefable this week, um, specifically for this. And Hippowdon, but I opted for T-Wave to slow down stuff like Haxorus, uh, because, you know, double T-Wave is actually kind of nice sometimes, and just basically prevents a lot of setup sweepers from just ruining my day. So I'm going to go straight back out into Carl Weezer, um, as he ends up going for the lead seed, which is a little bit unfortunate. And right here, I'm just trying to pivot around to get my Halucha in safely. I know he's going to Will-O-Wisp right here, and so I'm just going to go, oh, it's freezing up. Is that okay? Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> anyway, I'm just going to go for the Sludge Bomb. Uh, even though it's neutral, it's the only attacking move that I have on this. I have a Sludge Bomb and Clear Smog. Because, um, you know, those two can stop setup sweepers and also give me a decent stab. So, right here, I was really expecting him not to Leech Seed again. I thought he would maybe Seed Bomb. And uh, I didn't know if he expected me to have sub on Halucha. So, I'm going to make the double out into my Halucha right here versus this. Um, because I know I can just weaken his team a lot with Halucha if I do get to plus two. But he's actually going to go for the lead seed right here, which is super unfortunate. Because um, this means that my Citrus Berry is going to kick immediately um, after I sub up one more time. So, I don't have an opportunity to go for the Swords Dance. And I kind of have to sub up right here in order to... Uh, avoid the will-o-wisp because if he did decide to be gutsy and stay in then my halucha was pretty much dead weight for the rest of the match but it's okay um because now i just get to fire off my strongest move which is high jump kick 
despite the fact that I'm in Unburden range. Um, so while Halucha was kind of wasted this week, um, Halucha is kind of hit or miss. Um, I may not bring it a whole lot in the future, uh, only to matches where I think it can do a lot of work. But uh, you guys are going to see that this high jump kick does like 30% to his max physical defense hip out on. And I'm just going to go out in my Clefable. Um, I was really hoping to get uh, roared out into anything but Clefable, to be honest. Um, because... I did have stuff for this uh, Hepaton on every single one of my mons, um, Bar, Clefable, Excadrill, and Weezing. But as you guys will see, I do get kind of lucky later with Excadrill, but it's okay. Uh, I'm just going to go for the Moonblast, and it barely misses out on the kill. That's doing about 30-some percent right now. And the disappointing thing about that is that after lefties and slack off, that's going to be 56. And um, then with his... Or th then with the burn and my moon blast damage, it's only going to be doing about 47-ish, somewhere around in there. So that's not too good for me, um, because as you guys can see, he's just going to be able to slack off out to a reasonable amount of health. And uh, what he and what I'm basically trying to do right here is stall him out of slack offs, so that if it comes down to a last mon Gyarados sweep, that um, he won't be as durable and I can just continue to drag a dance in his face as he gets worn down by the burn and, and he can't really touch me in that scenario if uh, Gyarados is my last Mon. So I figured, you know, that should work out for me. He ends up going out into Gorgeist right here, which is kind of iffy, to be honest. He's going to frisk my lefties. Um, as I'm just going to go for the Moon Blast, and as you guys will see, this will be enough to two-hit KO his Gorgeist. So that is one Mon of his uh, defensive core down. And um, once I get this out of the way, well, actually, neither Mon and his defensive core really prevents Mega Gyarados from sweeping. Because as long as I get one Dragon Dance up at the uh, amount of HP that Gorgeist was at, it would die to rocks plus crunch. And um, Hepaton would just go down to a Stab Waterfall as well, yeah, you know, Stab Crunch. But uh, he's going to go into his Mamoswine right here, take some Rocks Recoil, and uh, he's going to go for the Icicle Spear. Um, he didn't want my Thundee getting in for free or uh, my or anything else on my team, which is understandable. Uh, he does get three hits, which, you know, I'm not going to complain about that because, you know, like three hits is about the average. But I'm going to go out into my Excadrill right here. And um, I can just fire off an Iron Head. He knows that I'm Scarfed because he said in his video, I think, that like I brought Scarf Axe Girdle every single week, which is why it's named Staple, because um, it's Staple on my team. Um, but I'm just going to fire off an Iron Head. I don't really lose anything by it. And uh, he's just going to go for the U-turn. He can't actually click Earthquake uh, because I do have Thunderous Wheezing and um, Gyarados chilling in the back. And, I, and there's not really any way for him to... Uh, there's not really any way that he can click Earthquake, but I'm going to go for the Iron Head here just on the switch um, to this, as he is also Scarf and he went for the U-turn. Um, but right here, you may think, Geo, you're a garbage player for going for flinches. Um, but I wasn't necessarily trying to go for the flinch. Um, I knew that he could not uh, Earthquake right here. So I was just trying to get off damage to minimize the amount of recovery that he would get from slack off because you know an extra 20% can help at the end of a battle especially if it comes down to whether Gyarados will be able to KO but unfortunately I do get two flinches in a row but you know given some of the luck we've had the past weeks I'm not too disappointed but right here um, he's going to come and intimidate me again and I am at minus two so even though he can't click Earthquake there's not really any reason for me to stay in uh, because I would just like, I would actually do zero damage to whatever comes in. Uh, so he's just going to U-turn uh, yeah, as I send out my Weezing. And, you know, I think Weezing did its job this week. Uh, he had a lot of physical attackers. It kind of held them back for the majority of the match. But he does have Mold Breaker EQ waiting for me in the back. And at this point, there's not really any reason for me to save this because, um, you know, it's like, Weezing, you did your job, but... It's like, not everything... It, like, like, like we Weezing at the same time is an Inumon and it can't really do everything for me. Sorry for my phone going off in the background, but anyway, I'm gonna go for an Acrobatics right here. I wanted to scout if he was a Scarf set, and uh, he wasn't, so... That, that just basically allows me to send in uh, Excadrill for free, pick up another KO with Iron Head. So Excadrill is actually putting in a ton of work this week, and it also prevents Mamoswine from coming out, which is super nice for me. Um, but I believe right here he's going to go out into his Dragonite, takes rock take rocks. No, he goes out into Lando. Um, and I know that he can't click EQ. Uh, he was talking about this in his commentary that... Um, 
both of us knew that he couldn't click EQ, so I knew he was clicking U-turn. I lost nothing by staying in and going for a minus one Iron Head. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that, as he does reveal to be CB Dragonite with... Uh, yeah, I'm really glad I didn't flinch him right there. That would have been garbage. Um, but he just ends up going for the... Uh, Super power right there knocking me out, but what this does is it gives my Thundee a free switch and uh, Thundee does actually get Does actually do a lot of work versus his team. Um, he right here. He could have gone out into his Mamo Swine um, But since rocks are up and he doesn't have any way to remove them There was no reason for him to switch out his Dragonite He's gonna go out in a scar right here, and I'm actually gonna go ahead and pause this for a second Because I have two mons left. I have my Thunderous and my Gyarados, he has two mons left as well in his Scarf Lando and his like 80%, it was like 78% uh, Mammoth Swine. So here are the two scenarios. Scenario one is he U-turns trying to uh, predict my switch out to Gyarados um, and he goes into Mammoth Swine. And scenario two is he goes for Stone Edge, he hits a Stone Edge, switches out into Mammoth Swine um, as I Dragon Dance, and then forces me to go for the Dragon Dance, or forces me to go for the Waterfall um, to knock out his Mammoth Swine in fear of Freeze Dry, and then can go back out into Lando, click Super Power, and maybe win. Scenario three is he just stays in and tries to hit three Stone, or I think it's four Stone Edges in a row. He would have to hit four stone edges in a row after Intimidate in order to uh, finish me off because Gyarados is actually pretty bulky. Um, and you, I'll, I'll pause it again later to kind of flesh out some of these scenarios because uh, he's only on 30 HP. He will live another rock switch in, which is important. Uh, but he just ends up going for a stone edge right here, knocking out Thundee, which is fine. Uh, Thundee did its job, it prevented EQs throughout the entire match. So I'm going to go into Gyarados right here. Um, Gyarados is going to go ahead and take, take rocks damage. I'm going to get the Intimidate off, which is also pretty big. And um, I'm going to go ahead and Mega Evolve, send out the behemoth himself, the, the shrimp, the god. Um, I wanted Mega Charizard X. Um, he's going to go for the Stone Edge right here. And I'm going to go for the Dragon Dance. And this is about the time of the battle where i got to pause it again. Okay, we're going to pause it right there when Gyarados is raising his speed. Because now it is a 50-50. If he goes for the Stone Edge as I Dragon Dance, the game is over. If he goes for the... Or if he switches out as I Waterfall, he wins. And if he switches out as I, as I Dragon Dance, I win. So there's two possible scenarios I win, which is him clicking Stone Edge or him switching out as I Dragon Dance. And there's one possible scenario where he wins, which is him switching out while I click Waterfall. Um, also, if he stays in and click, clicks Waterfall, then I also win that. I think that's the same scenario as before. But um, the safer play was definitely for me to Dragon Dance, but I didn't see him switching out right here. So I decided to go straight away for the Waterfall. As he stays in, clicks Stone Edge, and, this, and at this point I'm like, I won, but he does end up critting me, which is super unfortunate. Um, but, you know... I did get kind of lucky earlier in the match with the Iron Head flinches, and I'm willing to acknowledge that, but at the same time, I've had kind of a hacksy season so far, and um, it's like, you can argue whether the flinches mattered or not, because, um, spoilers, Thundee had Grass Knot, and um, no matter what, and he wasn't Max Spadef hip out on, he would have died to Grass Knot, um, and he would have died to a plus one waterfall, or plus two waterfall, so, um, it's questionable whether those mattered, but either way, you know, um, I suppose it will come back around at the end. Uh, he does get the crit, but it's okay. Um, just got to keep my head up because, um, you know, prepared really hard this week. Ended up taking an L. We'll, that just means I'll have to prepare better and uh, play better in the following weeks to where hacks doesn't even come into play. Um, and it won't even matter, but, you know is part of the game so if you guys did enjoy please make sure to leave a like as it really does help show support for the stuff that i'm doing here on the channel also make sure to answer today's comment question of the video what should the comment question of the video be um okay so i, I really want to get better at this game because <laughs> i've been thinking about this recently and for the amount of time i spend playing this game i'm actually not that good at it um i'm a pretty garbage like I can really only play hyper offense, um, and I'm 
generally pretty bad at preserving wind conditions and just a pretty bad player in general. And so um, you guys have probably seen me play and offer like 330 unique perspectives on um, my on like my game on how I play as opposed to one pretty biased perspective which is me so do you guys have any tips for me on uh, how to get better because um, I, I do want to try to get better at this I think it'll help both the quality of the content and just it'll make this game a little more fun to play um, but with that I urge you guys to subscribe if you guys are enjoying the constant content and with that I'll catch you on the flip-flop